Oh, wait. What? Hi. Wait. Look, this is Xevious. This is premier video game arcade stuff from like 1980. I mean, that's primo stuff right there. That's 8-bit graphics. Mmm. Don't you love it? Well, it's Secure Digital Life. We are here today to talk about in-map. Doug's going to do a demo for us from the remote studio in Far Rockaway. So hang in there and we'll be right back. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm, so, I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> I think it's another day, it's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You Oh, oh! You move my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there cut. You Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. We're here again. It's just me though. I keep saying we, but it's the royal we. Today we're going to talk about the illustrious, infamous, and absolutely cool in map. I'm gonna. Doug's gonna do a demo of it from the remote studio in somewhere. And, uh, but we're going to be sure to come to B-Sides, Connecticut, if you can, on October 7th. I will be there. Russ is going to be there. Uh, this, we'll have the show stuff there. So there's prizes and all kinds of fun stuff. Wild West Hack and Fest. It's, it's going to get here. It really is. Before you know it, it's going to be October 27th. And they have training before that. And we're going to be there for the whole thing. So be sure and come out to Deadwood, South Dakota, to the casino. And uh, I don't know what that saloon is called. Where What's the guy's name? Wild Bill Hickok or something. No, Doc Holliday was who got shot in Deadwood, South Dakota. So the famous dead man's hand. But today, I am going to talk about InMap a little bit and explain to you why you would use this thing. Because I think most of us by now know what network scanning is. If, if you don't, uh, we can talk. But network scanning of the illegal variety is certainly something that's out there in the world on a pretty regular basis if you watch your logs on your equipment. But legitimate network scanning is all about what is called baselining. And one of the things you need to do, and you really do need to do this, is to understand that your network needs to end up getting a baseline that you understand. And one way to get a handle on that is by scanning your own network. And in the old days, we used to write these pieces of code. So you could, in C++ or C or whatever, you could sit down and write uh, your own network scanner. And basically what it does, it goes out and hits every port on every IP address that you give it. And you had to code that up and write your own stack and all those kind of fun things. Today, all that stuff was bundled together. Now, there was an engine called SATEN, which stands for System Administrator's Tool for Administering Networks. And it was a very early incarnation of InMap. And InMap later took that SATEN open source engine and put it together to create the product InMap. And it's been around a long time. I mean, back in like early 2000s. So this, this product's probably at least 15 years old. Actually, it's, I know it's more than 15 years old. So it's been around. It's been vetted. It's been used by everyone. It's been in movies. If you go to insecure.org, you can get your own copy of it for free, if you can believe that. And uh, you can also look at their list of all the movies that InMap's been used in to, to make it look like somebody was hacking something, when really they were just scanning ports. Um, but basically, that allows you to sit down and figure out what does my network look like on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you get that stuff kind of set up, everything is going to work pretty well for you. And you can go back and scan your network another day, and you can get this down to a really quick little process where you can just take a quick, and you can even script it. So one of the nicest things is to script all that together and then just look for variants. So I know my baseline. When I see a new IP pop up, I need to see a new device pop up on my network. That gets printed in a log. And I open that log and go, oh, look at that. There's something new. What is it? And that may be a user who put up a new system. It may be somebody who plugged a Wi-Fi node into your network. It could be a hacker. It could be all kinds of stuff. It's usually legit. But it may be one of your end users who need to be punished. And you know who you are. Be warned. Scanning of any sort that goes outside things that you have under your control 
is essentially illegal in the United States under a variety of federal legislation. But you could conceivably be prosecuted civilly and criminally for causing, my favorite, fiduciary harm. So if you do cause fiduciary harm to someone who has enough money to hire lots of attorneys to come after you, you may actually end up in civil court, assuming they know who you are. But InMap is a super cool thing, and Doug is going to show us how to use it. Hi, Doug. Is Doug there? Hello? Uh-oh. Okay, Doug's not there. Maybe. Oh, there he is. Thanks, Doug and Russ. Oh, thank you for cutting to me. I, I knew you would eventually. I've been sitting here like on pins and needles, like mm, trying to get you to, to talk to me. But I'm here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of InMap. First of all, don't do this at home. Well, actually, do it to home, not to anyone else. Remember, and I know they said this again, and I'm sure that Doug, because he's always saying these kind of really lame things, it's illegal. Uh, it's not illegal, however, to scan yourself. <laughs> uh, but, um, so you can. Now, what I've got for you here to see is InMap uh, in its pure, simple form, not. Normally, InMap is a Linux app uh, or a MacBook or something like that that runs at the command line. So purists run it at the command line using instructions like you see right here. So if you have InMap installed on a Linux machine, which is easy enough to do, uh, you, can, you can just install it with, with any of the tools or you can manually install it. You can do all kinds of tricks with it. But commands like this InMap T4AV are commands that you would type at the command line to do InMap. But... Because InMap is so popular, uh, they developed this thing called ZenMap, which is a Windows binary install. So that means you can just download one binary package and it installs the whole thing for you right there. And you can run it with this nice window, uh, like you see here. And it has pretty much all the options. Uh, again, purists will tell you there's some specific things you might not be able to do easily here. But this is a great way to collect information. And it does put it all in one nice place, and it's, it's, it's visual, so it's a little bit easier to use. I set up a network that's isolated from everything else, and I put some targets on that network. And we're going to see if we can figure out what those targets are. There's not very many, so it won't take very long. But the network I'm going to scan, I'm going to put that in the target box up here, is 10.1.1, except it's not 1, 10.1.1.0 slash 24, which means... I'm going to scan all 255 addresses in this uh, 10.1.1 network. And so if I do that, you'll see now, as soon as I put this in, the instruction down here is going to change on this line so that now you see it actually has this target. Now, you can scan lots and lots and lots of things with InMap, and they have all these scans available for you out here in this box. And this does not include, I, I, somehow you can set up every scan you could normally do in InMap, but they have all the basic ones here. Intense scans take a lot longer than uh, quick scans, ping scans, things like that. So for instance, if we just run a ping scan, which is the easiest and simplest thing you can imagine. Now this is wide open stuff. Uh, these are not stealth scans. We talked about in the last show, stealth scans and Christmas trees and things like that. This is a, a, a wide open, everybody will see you scan. I'm going to run it right here, but it's super quick. It should happen pretty fast. And you'll see InMap starting. You see the command that was used to run that command right there. And all of a sudden, you see stuff pop up on the screen. So you see now that it found four different hosts that are out here in the network. 10.1, I'm just going to say 1, 128, 129, and 130. I'm guessing these are DHCPs because they're sequential and DHCP. Uh, uses sequential addresses, so it starts at some address, it goes on. I can even guess that it's somebody who knows something about networking because their DHCP starts at 128. I'm guessing this is DHCP. Look at what it collected from these different devices. It collected MAC addresses, and it says right there, VMware. So it knows that this MAC address that it's seeing is very likely a VMware device. Again, VMware, VMware. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Hang on, let me just silence that and shut it up. Uh, all those things together add up to basically that we know we're probably dealing with a VMware network. So that's fine. It scanned 256 IP addresses, four hosts up, and it took five seconds to do this. So you got a lot of information. Each host is listed over here in this chart. Uh, you don't have any of this other information because you haven't done a scan at that level at this point in time. 
and you could glance at this. This is this is a very basic kind of thing that somebody you might set up on your network and run uh, every day even just to see if that network segment has had stuff plugged into it, if it's got new things in it that aren't supposed to be there, and on and on and on. Let's try a little bit different scan though with it now. I'm going to switch over and we're going to run a Quick Scan Plus. And this Quick Scan Plus has a bunch of new options. And if you want to look up all these options, it's easy enough to do. Just jump on the internet, go to insecure.org or, or Google uh, InMap with options or install InMap and look at the options yourself. They do have a manual for it so you can get it. It tells you what every one of these things does specifically. Um, and it will let you know. I'm going to rerun this scan now and it won't take very long because and you can refine. So you could actually go in and you could say, I'm only going to scan these things that I've already found uh, just so you can see those things run. I'm going to pause you for a second while this scan runs because it does take a little bit longer. So this would be like a cooking show where uh, I say, and now put this in the oven for at 400 for, for oh, it actually already finished. So while I was battling, it did, uh, I don't think it's actually completely finished yet, but we can start talking about it while it's still running. If you look at this report now, um, we see that there's an NMAP report for the device 10111. Now, I know me, and I, I would guess that that's some kind of, uh, of a service on the network. Here is the first thing of real exciting interest. If you look right here, you see that this is port 22 TCP, and that's what that first little write up there, sorry, it, it keeps adding stuff. We got a bunch of services open down here. Um, we got 22 TCP open. That is known as SSH. Now I'm going to give you a question about NMAP. NMAP is not brilliant. It's a great product, and don't get me wrong, but it is not smart, meaning it didn't probe that port and see if it's really SSH. All it did was probe the port with a TCP send packet. And if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, go watch the show from last week. It probed it with a send packet. It got a send act packet back. It completed the connection. So it pretty much believes that that is, actually maybe it did probe it. I think they've updated it because it actually gives you a version of this. So it says it's open SSH 5.5 Debian 6 plus squeeze 8. It's giving you a bunch of information so I think it actually must have probed it. So I'll strike all that. Um, that's an important port because if we were probing a network trying to accomplish something, we could very easily jump in there on port 22 and now start trying to brute force password attack. We don't know what this device is at this point. Um, what I can tell you is I've got a Mac. We had that before, so we've got VMware. So we know this is probably a virtual machine. That's fine. It looks like it's running Linux version uh, 3. Point, kernel 3.x or 4.x. So that pipe means or. It's got an OS estimate here. And it doesn't have much information. It guesses that it's Linux 3.2 or 4. Point something. Um, I'll tell you later what this thing is. It did not uh, fingerprint this device uh, particularly well at this point, so we'll see if we can do a little better later. Um, we scanned 128, so we jumped up to the next device here. The host is up. It scanned 100 ports on there. It says all 100 ports are filtered, and it uh, can't give me a specific on 128 at that point. So it didn't get much information back on that particular device. Let's keep going. Now you could go back and do revised scans that focus, and I'll show you how to, we'll go back and try to scan this a little harder later. Uh, NMAP was scanned for 129. The host was up. Uh, it had 90 closed ports, but there are some open. Port 22 and port 80 were both open. That means that this thing is very possibly, and it's running open SSH 7.3, and it's running Apache, so it did probe the port, looks like, to get information back. Apache HTTPD 2.4.18. This is information that hackers love. Uh, you may love this information, too, on your own networks, because what if you go out there and see somebody put up a web server in your network? That's what Apache HTTPD is. So that Apache uh, daemon is running in this network, and that's the version of it. If you're concerned about the version of Apache people are running, this is a good way to test it quickly because you saw how little time this scan took. Uh, let's see if we got any guesses on what this thing is. It's again, it's very similar. It's trying to guess the OS, but it didn't actually tell us specifically what that OS was. Let's see if we got another one here. 
This one is for 130. It's got 91 closed for, but look at all the crap that's open on here. And I can tell you right off that that's a Microsoft Windows box because it, it absolutely is. It's got port 135 open. That's MSRPC. It's got NetBIOS running on 139. That's a Windows chatter port. It's got 445. This is a Microsoft name service. It's got MSRP on, on 1025. It's got LSA or some other product open there in terminal on 1026. More MSRPC. Uh, it's got a port open. We don't even know what it is. So Nmap doesn't have that 1028 port, 1029. Uh, and then it also has an HTTP. So this is another type of Microsoft service that's up and running on port 130. It says the device is general purpose. It's Microsoft Windows 8.1. Um, interesting that's I don't think that's true I'm guessing it's misguessing it says it's Microsoft Windows 8.1 R1 maybe that's what's on there I thought I put a Windows 7 box up I thought I put up a Windows XP which that would be this one a Linux box this is a Linux Ubuntu and this one I would guess is a Windows 7 uh, but it didn't guess it did get the username of it. Let's look at the service names there. It got that, that the name of that is Fans User PC. Um, it says OS and service detection performed. Please report any incorrect results so you can actually pass fingerprinting information back up to uh, to uh, Nmap if you want to give and share some stuff with them. It then goes ahead and, and it starts outlining what all's here. It gives you the nice little graphic topology. For the network, it gives you host details about any host that you clear, care to click on. If it knows anything about it, it's guessing Linux, it's guessing Microsoft. Uh, I don't know what the picture of the bomb means uh, right there, but it gives you the IP. It gives you what it thinks the operating system is. It's 100% accurate. I'm guessing it's not. <laughs> um, it's got ports down here that are open, that are interesting. It's got all these summary information. There's a lot of other information about this device that is shared right there. And then we can actually see the different scans that we did uh, that we've saved out here. And you can save all this information and put it aside somewhere so that you can look at it later. We have a ton of information here. So now we actually have a summary of all the ports we now see that are open uh, for all these different devices. You can click through very quickly. Uh, you can click on topologies for any different, uh, it doesn't seem to change any and we've seen all that so let's go back and let's try running something a little more dramatic now you can also see services this is a list of all the services we've seen so far so http is running on these uh, if, if you're looking for specific services like port 22 you can jump right in there and grab all that very quickly and and one of the things i like about zen map is that you can do this so fast and Again, if you're a Uber hacker type person and you're willing to go to the command line and build your own scripted, you know, your scripted probes and all these kind of things, cool, I understand. But that's not what we're really focused on. We're really more focused on protecting yourself and protecting your network. This is a great way to jump in at your home or whatever or your apartment and look at what your network looks like. Don't scan other people's stuff, but you can see what's in your local network. If you jump out of your local network and you start scanning other people, meaning you change this target. So I'm going to write, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. That would be really bad. I'm not going to jump in there and, and do anything more dramatic. Let's try doing a more intense scan though. I'm going to do an intense scan plus, and I'll pause it while this, these take a little while. Um, I'm going to pause you right, I'm going to start the scan, and you see that the instruction right here goes. So I'm scanning, and when you do this with the zero, it's scanning the entire network. And maybe while I'm babbling, and you see it going here, and it's jumping through all these different addresses that are down, and just sort of skipping along trying to see. I'm going to pause you while it runs, okay? Okay, so I like got old sitting here. Um waiting on this thing to finish this is why you don't tend to do intense scans that took forever um certainly we can go back up and i can walk you through some of this it's still running actually i think it's been about an hour and 15 minutes since it started uh if you do try to scan you know really lengthy types of scans of big networks with lots of hosts so like doug and russ probably told you about 
Base lines are really good. It allows you to look for things with quick scans, which is what you really want to do. You don't want to commit yourself to where you have to do 15 hours of scanning every day because you're not going to do it. And then it basically just becomes pointless. But let's just quickly look at what we found. Again, we know there's four hosts here. You can see that it ran a very intensive scan. It went out, it ran all kinds of UDP scans of these different addresses. Uh, scanning thousands and thousands of, of uh, ports all the time. It finished all that finally, then it started doing service scans, which take a long time to do. And you can see all these scans running here where it's running different services, it's trying to test. Ultimately, it gets back to where we saw on the quick scans. There's nothing fancy here, so you're not going to get much from this, but you did get some additional information. You can see that it actually gathered the different keys now these are not break-in keys, mind you. These are just the base keys that are exchanged with SSH, but they can be used for uh, more sophisticated types of attacks. Uh, we did find some additional ports open, like this UDP port 123. If you know what that is, that's a, a network time uh, port. So if you're using like a time setting where it goes out and queries a time and pulls that back in, that's where you get that kind of information. All the way down the pike here, you see it scanning and it's finding some UDP ports that are open down through here on these different boxes. MAC addresses, mostly stuff that we already had. Um, you see these TCP predictions. This is um, pretty common for modern machines. The difficulty is going to be very, very high. Uh, 253 is about as high of a difficulty as you're going to get, which means you're not going to be able to do man in the middle attacks against these types of boxes. You see it did determine that's a Linux machine. We found TCP ports open. We found port 80 open again. We've got more keys being reported. And you can go down through this data all the way to this Windows box, which had a lot more stuff open. And we found all this information with the quick scan. But with these sophisticated scans, we're actually getting all this information back. <clears throat> um, this thing is, is finally finished. Uh, the total time was 4,690 seconds. It sent 12,000 uh, raw packets, which represented 435K uh, of data that was sent trying to scan this network. It did try to find the, the work group name, and, and you see that here. It found it. It found the name of the machine. It found all kinds of inf interesting stuff. End of the story on this is that Nmap is a very sophisticated tool that you will definitely want to learn to put in your toolkit because it can be used to map your networks on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have those baselines, you can quickly establish if something has changed without doing all these very elaborate scans. These things here, this intense scan, would very likely trigger a response from a firewall or other devices that were monitoring the network for scanning. So if you run scans like this, you're probably going to get flagged. You may get barred or shunned from that network. So these are tools that you should use for your own purposes on your own systems. I'm going to turn this back. I really have to go. Uh, I'm going to turn this back to Doug and Russ who are sitting back in the studio. Doug and Russ, thanks for having me. See ya. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, it feels like 1979. This thing actually has Galaga on it, which was like the second video arcade game that came out after Space Invaders, if you can imagine that. Well, thank you, Doug, you sexy thing. Um, we're back, and uh, Russ isn't here, so it's just little old wee me. And that's about it for this show. So next week, we're going to start talking about the art of packet. Sniffing smells like teen spirit. Tune in.